Okay, how are we going? Let me see your hands. Calling yourself a god is a bit of a stretch, no matter how powerful you think you might be. There's always going to be someone stronger who will probably even humiliate you to the point where you become a walking meme. Just ask Loki, I'm sure he knows what I'm talking about. However, I will maintain that a lot of superheroes are capable of going into god mode, which is obviously not the same, but it's still pretty commendable, right? As you know, the TV region always shows its receipts, so here I am today with the top 10 times superheroes went god mode in the movies. Like, share and subscribe right now, otherwise I'll be telling the YouTube gods not to bless you with relevant content. All right, let's do this. Let me see your hands. Now, a dude like Dwayne Johnson's definitely no stranger to dramatic entrances. I mean, just look at all of his WWE appearances. However, I think we can all agree that his first appearance as Black Adam was as epic in its own right. I can obviously talk about how the ambiance slowly builds up to the scene and the big reveal, but what I think really stands out the most is that you don't really see his face till he's done taking down all of those gunmen in truly godlike fashion. Also, I've got to shout out the effects team for making this scene past the PG-13 cut. The man literally fries a dude to death and rips off his arms and stuff. I mean, how do you think parents are going to explain that to their prepubescent kids? But then again, if you look at some of the Rocks videos from back in the day, I guess this is still a bit lighter in comparison. Spider-Man 3 is somewhat of a mixed bag for comic book lovers. It wasn't really loved at the time of release, but with nostalgia being a huge factor nowadays, it's finding some new love from younger fans. Of course, it's hard to ignore the impact of Bully Maguire in the meme culture, so I guess he really is the main selling factor. See you, chump. What the hell? Even if you look at this scene over here, the reason why Peter Parker is able to go god mode in his normal Spider-Man suit is because he's learned Bully Maguire's hip thrusting mistakes. Yeah, I'm honestly talking about that bell scene earlier. But just look how quickly Spidey's able to get all those metal rods around Venom. That's flash level speed, and it suits Peter's true character. But you know what? If the symbiote never attached itself to Spider-Man in the first place, Toby would never have known its weakness. Congratulations, bro. You played yourself. Just be careful who you change into. Are you afraid that I'm gonna turn into some kind of criminal? Quit worrying about me, okay? Something's different. I'll figure it out. Stop lecturing me, please. Right. Listen, I did like Shang-Chi, but I rarely talk about the film unless I'm covering the final battle as one of my entries. And that's exactly what's happening here as well. Anyway, the main highlight of the grand finale was obviously the giant CGI spectacles with all the dragons and stuff. But spare a thought for Shang-Chi and Shu Wenwu who put in a lot of effort to give us those killer fight moves. Even so, the focus of my attention is when Shang-Chi finally gains control of the Ten Rings and enters God territory when he moves them around, almost like a force field. That obviously spells bad news for Daddy, and I really like how the power struggle continue to ebb and flow between the two fighters. Also, I've got to give one last shout out to the moment when Shang-Chi harnesses the power of the rings in the palms of his hand. It definitely looks like something a god would do. talking about gods. It's a given that Superman has to find a way to this list, right? He's actually one of the few guys here who qualifies as a real god. His powers have been a talking point ever since he made his first appearance in the DC Comics, but his cinematic versions haven't really flexed themselves as supreme beings as much as they should do. One moment that I can think of is when the Man of Steel isn't even in his normal senses. Yeah, it's the scene in Justice League where Clark Kent channels his inner Bully Maguire and takes on the entire squad by himself. Alright, I'm not going to count Batman because, you know, he's a, a, a human, but come on, Wonder Woman, Aquaman and Cyborg all at the same time? I mean, that's not God mode. 
that's God himself. And how can I forget the moment when Superman spots Flash whilst he's in his own Godspeed zone? It's actually a no-brainer if you think about it. The world needs you. It doesn't need you. Tell me. What's 9 plus 10? 21. You stupid. How the fuck? <laughs> Are you hyped for Quantum Mania? Well, I sure am, because I need me some of that Scott Lang content. Paul Rudd is somewhat of an enigma when it comes to his career trajectory. He's been in one of the Halloween sequels, Friends, and even Sesame Street, believe it or not. But yeah, if there was a role that Gen Z's gonna remember him by, it's gotta be Ant-Man. Now, the first movie didn't exactly set the world on fire, but actually found his role in Captain America Civil War a lot more impactful. You really get to see his powers in context because he's up against guys like Iron Man and Spider-Man. The highlight is, without a doubt, his giant man form when he becomes big enough to use an actual truck as a toy truck. When we think about gods, we usually associate them as gigantic dudes, right? So it only makes sense that this is kinda like Scott's final evolution. It's okay, it's okay. Uh, sorry, I know I'm not a whale. This will just take a second. Like, share, and subscribe if you consider the TB region to be your one true religion. All right then, it's time to bless you with my top five. You're probably wondering where the speedsters are, right? Well, look no further, because we've got Quicksilver in the house, or should I say, in the kitchen. Between Aaron Taylor-Johnson and Evan Peters, I think it's easy to say that the X-Men version of the Tricky Quickie is more memorable. And to be fair, they did Pietro dirty in Age of Ultron. Anyway, you must be thinking, why haven't I included the mansion scene in this list? Well, it's because I gotta honor an OG. And we all know that the kitchen scene was what made Quicksilver so lovable in the first place. It's kind of like that girl power moment in Infinity War. They made a super grand imitation in Endgame, but it was a bit too on the nose for my liking. But yeah, when it comes to comedic moments, this is as good as it gets. You know what? I think Peter's better suited to be the god of mischief over Loki, you know? Oh, where, where did you? I was looking for the professor. I thought he lived here. Look, this isn't really some Super Saiyan level entry, but if you consider all the details, Steve Rogers lifted a hammer that could only be held by a god. So yeah, this definitely qualifies as a worthy entry. <laughs> Get it? Worthy? Also, it really helps that Captain America was able to use Mjolnir effectively in battle against Thanos. Apart from the very obvious crowd-pleasing angle, it was a genuinely powerful moment that reminded everyone what Steve Rogers really stands for. Sure, he's not part of the MCU anymore, but he left us all on a super high note, and I don't mean the Ariana Grande kind. Also, come to think of it, Mjolnir's not exactly been faithful to Thor, right? First Steve, then Jane. Well, at least Stormbreaker wants to be with you, bro. Please value loyalty, especially in today's day and age, where you're in and out with a simple swipe. What? We were just talking. Only thing bumming me out is the fact I have to live in a world without Captain America. Thank you. I'll do my best. That's why it's yours. Just gotta go faster than the speed of light, far beyond the speed of light. You gotta break the rule, Barry, and you gotta do it now. I know there's a lot of controversial news surrounding Ezra Miller resuming his role as Barry Allen, but I'm gonna stay away from it because, you know, I am such a good boy. Anyway, look, jokes aside, I always separate the art from the artist, and in this case, the character from the actor. I've already praised the Speed Force multiple times on my previous videos, and this time isn't different. With the fate of humanity hanging in the balance, it's quite literally a do or die moment, and the Flash doesn't disappoint. Dad, whatever happens, I want you to know, your kid was one of them, Dad. One of the best of the best. 
This is as godly as it gets because, well, is going back in time with each passing second and to see all the destroyed matter getting regenerated right in front of our eyes gave me some serious goosebumps. Now, if only the actor could do the same thing about his reputation, right? Oh, sorry, I've done it again, haven't I? I should make a list covering my top 10 videos where this entry makes it to my top 2. Thor's another character who's genuinely worthy of the god title, although I still think that lightning is a better calling point than thunder. Not that my opinion matters when it comes to Norse mythology, but yeah, those are my two cents on the subject. I mean, just look at this scene. Where on earth is the association with thunder? All I'm seeing is an overpowered god in all of his overpowered glory, blasting his enemies to smithereens using a gigantic burst of lightning. I think it's safe to say that this moment's been immortalized as the best MCU entry of all time. Your haircut? Notice you've copied my beard? I am inevitable. You know by now, emotions also play a huge role in my decisions, and that's exactly why I love this Entry 3000. Iron Man is a name that needs no introduction. From a standard Marvel character in the comics to the most recognizable MCU character in cinematic history, Tony Stark has accomplished a feat that others can only dream of. Now, does this final snap in Endgame qualify as a God Mode entry? Psh I'm so freaking lootly. He might have had the power of the Infinity Stones by his side, but for Iron Man to bear through all the pain and make the final snap that ends it all, this is what a true hero is. It's not about purity or always living by superficial moral standards. It's about doing the right thing. And that's exactly why the MCU's most important legacy character stands tall amongst everyone else. And again, that's the hero gig. Part of the journey is the end. Everything's gonna work out exactly the way it's supposed to. I love you 3000. Damn, I got a little emotional with that last one. Anyway, like, share and subscribe if you want me to shower you with more wholesome content. Reach out to me in my comments for your suggestions and check out my description for links to my socials. All right then, see you next time on the TV Region.